Thousand Sons A Primer Every age has its myths, and many of the central myths of the 20th century took the form of science fiction. Science promised humanity the knowledge of the inner workings of the universe, and science's daughter, technology, promised the ability to harness those inner workings to improve the species' lot in life. A heady brew for the imagination that flowered into the literary genre we call science fiction. From humble beginnings in the scientific romances and speculations of Jules Verne, H.G. Wells, and others, science fiction came into its own in the years between the world wars, as the readers of pulp magazines thrilled to the adventures of Kimball Kinnison, Buck Rogers, and other spacefaring heroes whose tales evoked both wonder at the possibilities the future might bring, as well as hope for a better world. These same themes would form the foundation upon which much of later science fiction was built and then expanded upon throughout the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, when many talented writers remade what had been derisively called space opera into a subgenre of remarkable depth and sophistication. It is from this subgenre of science fiction that Thousand Suns proudly takes its inspiration. Thousand Suns is a science fiction role-playing game set in a future when humanity has traveled into the far reaches of the galaxy, colonized new worlds, encountered other intelligent species, and established interstellar states by which to govern itself. The game draws much of its inspiration from the classic literary imperial science fiction of the 50s, 60s, and 70s, so-called because its stories typically featured mighty galactic empires and whose plots often harken back to the events from the age of imperialism in the 19th century. This package arrived for me yesterday and it's a very strange size, a small size, and even though I knew it was going to be that size, it's always it's that little bit strange when you realize, you know, there are two hardback books in here and it's it's about the size of a you know, like a VHS cassette tape. But anyway, let's tear it open. What's in here, obviously, after that long and involved introduction, is A Thousand Suns, the role-playing game. It's A Thousand Suns and its supplement book on starships. And as I wrestle nigh impotently with the cardboard here, um, let's talk about this a little bit. This is a a game whose system is available via the OGL. Look, always upside down. Okay, so the, the system, the 12 degree system is available to all to use through the OGL. The setting is not. And the setting is what we talked about in the intro, this imperial science fiction. All right, Thousand Suns. Very gripping cover for all its simplicity and it's author, James Malashevsky. Well, he's kind of disappeared into the universe out there, at least as far as I know. But the founder of the Grognardia blog and one of the early voices encouraging people to look at the early forms of Dungeons and Dragons, you know, go back and look at it again. Go back and read through the Dungeon Master's Guide as an adult. Go back and look at Appendix N and go track down those books and read them to make sense out of the game, to see if you still want to play it kind of thing. Well, this was pretty important, in my opinion, to the foundation of what is now the, the OSR and the, the spark of literary exploration, which is still gripping the role-playing community, people going back and reading the books that they had as kids, but with new eyes, going back and reading the games that they played as kids, but with new eyes, and recognizing that maybe the way that we looked at them was was not altogether what they were. So people talk about the, the fiction of our past as being problematic, and that things like these colonial stories, where we read about these vast space empires and, and what they do to local populations and things. We should just ignore these these pieces of our literary history. We should put them behind us and write different stuff. And 
I don't disagree with that. I think we should write our own stories. I think we should find a way to write and tell our own stories. And that's a huge part of what role-playing games are. At the same time, we can't ignore history. And every time we set about to ignore history, we end up making bigger and bigger asses of ourselves. And so it's with kind of fondness and excitement and trepidation that I look at games like Thousand Suns, where we are set out, like Traveler, to recreate a very specific kind of fiction with a very specific kind of character, many of whom might not be all that nice as people, either based on the society that they come from or the activities they get up to out there between the worlds as smugglers or pirates or what have you. Those of you who already play Traveler may wonder maybe why you'd want to add this book or series of books to your collections. I'm going to suggest that maybe, especially the way that Traveler gets talked about, it's a beloved game that people don't seem to be able to play as easily as they would like, or they have to you know, push people over this expectation of, oh, that's the game where you could die in character creation, blah, blah, blah. Well, it might actually be easier to play that game the way that you always wanted to play that game. It might be more easy to do that with Thousand Sons. That may seem like a bold statement, but it's based on some very simple ideas. First, when you say Traveler, what exactly are you talking about? There are now so many different editions and versions of Traveler, so many different licenses of Traveler, different inroads and conceptualizations of Traveler that not only do you need to decide to play it, you have to decide which one to play. You don't have that problem with Thousand Sons. You're free to do with it what you will without some of the burden of expectation or previous editions or subsequent editions. This helps you neatly sidestep your game not being Traveler enough or being too Traveler. You can simply convert or import all of your previous Traveler material and run it with this system and everyone will be fine because somebody in your group will have to convert anyway or learn. Or run with the built-in Thousand Suns setting. Get to play a game that's a clear and loving homage to Traveler, and again, sidestep all of those problems. It's, it's win in every direction. Next to that, there is the use of a very clear, comprehensive, and familiar system. It doesn't really contribute any curveballs or surprises. You're rolling two dice, 2d12s. You are figuring out a target number based on skill level and an attribute and any difficulty modifiers which might apply. Those difficulty modifiers adjust the target number. The more skilled or more capable your character is, the higher their target number because this is a roll under system. So you're giving yourself more and more room for success and the harder that the situation is can pull that, that window of success more tightly closed. Very simple. People can pick it up very quickly, and it's connected in enough ways to what people expect from games like Traveler or older games that, again, like I said, there are no big surprises. So there are a lot of advantages to simply going in this direction rather than trying to sort out how or which version of Traveler you might play in order to play Traveler. But this game distinguishes itself from Traveler in a number of ways not the least of which is that you can get the entire package in three well-priced books. We have the core rulebook, which is quite complete in that it details ships and, and building campaigns and aliens and technology and whatnot. Plus, there's the Starship Supplement, and after that, there is a sample sandbox campaign area to play. This is a great setup if you're just looking for a taste of this kind of imperial space opera, then you can get the core book and go and have a fulfilling time. If you're the type that likes to tinker and invent things and get you know in under the hood, then you add in the Starships book. And if you're not really sure you know how to approach setting up this kind of open-ended campaign, getting the five stars source book and adventure 
uh, supplement can demonstrate pretty clearly the, the starting seeds of how to deal with that and how to make it rich and inviting and open to player and character interaction, intervention, and exploration. So what it boils down to is being kind of a very comprehensive and coherent approach to a style of science fiction role play that maybe people have been looking forward to trying for a long time and either are hesitant to do or they, they don't know which books they might need because there's a lot of books available for every edition of Traveler now. And so, you know, where do I start? How do I do it? What should I read first? And, and this sort of thing. Picking up Thousand Suns can obviate a lot of those problems. And if you really enjoy it and then want to go on from there and try on Traveler or Metamorphosis Alpha or any of these other great games from our past, you will be in, in more ways prepared to do so than maybe you would have been without it. If you're an old hand from those old days and you've kind of moved away from the mechanics of our youth, but haven't moved away from the interests of our youth, then this again is kind of a clean and simple way to take all of that on and have a lot of fun doing so. Anyway, these are my thoughts on Thousand Suns, the rule book, Thousand Suns, the Starships book, and Thousand Suns, Five Stars, the supplement. If you've played it, if you're interested in it, if you want to talk more about it, the role-playing game learning group is one of the places where you can go and do just that. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching.